Hello and welcome to the Forbes India cover story podcast series in association with the indicas.com. My name is Abhishek and the story of the fortnight is uh, that of how Jet Airways has lost the plot. It has been in the news for many many weeks and months but finally the company suspended its operations uh, a few days back and joining me on the call is the fascinating stories author Manu Balachandran who's uh, traveled far and wide interviewed a bunch of folks from the industry those who knew Naresh Goel very closely. and uh, has put this story out hi manu uh, thanks for joining us hi abhishek thank you thank you so much for having me on the call the world knows that running an airline business is tough uh, especially in a country like india i mean uh, everything from the weight of the tray size in which they serve the food to the material used in the carpets is accounted for to reduce drag and weight at that altitude then there are turn around times and a zillion other factors uh, jet has been doing that uh, all this while since 1993 when did it start going uh, uh, down So uh, Abhishek I mean the story of Jet Airways the fall rather the fall of Jet Airways uh, you know when we trace back it actually goes back to around 2004 2005 there was a sense of desperation that Naresh Goel had at that point Jet Airways had already cemented its place as India's uh, biggest uh, private airline by market share there but what happened was Air Deccan had come into the picture Air Deccan was a low cost model and they had begun to reduce the prices quite drastically and which was not was it sustainable for uh, for jet airways alongside you know kingfisher was coming in and then there was the acquisition of uh, air deccan by jet airways uh, by kingfisher airlines they did that primarily so because kingfisher needed uh, 20 aircrafts or more to start flying internationally so in that attempt to increase its um, fleet size kingfisher acquired air deccan which put naresh goel on the back foot although he had about 40 44% market share then he believed that you know the acquisition of sahara would help him so he went ahead uh, acquired sahara for closely about 2000 to 2200 crores which in hindsight people say was uh, was a lot of money that jet airways shelled out which was not needed in the first place it really didn't work towards increasing its market share the advantage of having an increased market share increased fleet is that you can start dictating prices which jet really couldn't do and then of course there was you know indigo spice jet all these guys who had started to come in right because you you mentioned in your story that uh, when that acquisition took place uh, they had to acquire different airline makes which meant different maintenance crews uh, they had to hire expatriate pilots once and the the percentage that went into salaries was perhaps in double figures when indigo was managing with uh, almost half of that right i think what happened was the ambition was too high uh, at that point um, the industry was also uh, in sort of doldrums at that point apart from the aircrafts that he got from sahara mostly to be used for domestic what happened is he's all he had also gone and acquired 22 wide bodied aircrafts now uh, wide bodied aircrafts are mostly used for international routes and these aircrafts are rather expensive uh, we didn't have the fleet size or we didn't have uh, you know pilots who were trained in this we didn't have engineers who were trained in this in india at that point that for him was necessary because he wanted to expand the international operations then the other part was that you know by 2008 you know with the influx of all these airlines and you know low cost and after the acquisition of sahara jet airways had to sort of rebrand themselves so if you see then they had introduced a um, new new livery and things like that uh, in the aircraft which was also rather expensive at that point they changed the uniforms and then what happened was in 2008 uh, the financial crisis hit and just before that the period uh, you know i mean uh, running up to the to the crisis oil prices were at record levels it had uh, been at about 147 mind you 50% of an airline cost uh, or an aviation or, or for an aircraft cost is about is the atf price atf as prices went up these guys were rather helpless but at the same time they were on this you know ambitious growth plan that they had charted out so all that meant additional cost and at the same time prices domestic travel prices in india went uh, going up to the way they had expected and by then they had begun to lose market share indigo was coming into the picture as we see indigo uh, is a case study in how an airline should be run and there is a lot being written about and and in your article uh, seems to suggest that of course there are two sides to every story but the peers uh, in the industry uh, haven't taken to kindly to uh, naresh goel and they talk about Uh, to quote from one of them who is uh, the former executive director of air india saying that goel is a product of crony capitalism and that rules were tweaked to ensure that competition have a tough time for instance you write about the 520 rule uh, where you need to have 20 aircraft and to be flying for 5 years before you can qualify for international operations what part of uh, 
Naresh Goel's success uh, rode on his political clout and how did he manage that? All of his work that he's done, he's had tremendous clout within the system which helped him, you know, move things in his favor. So if you go back, you know, start, you know, with the time out post after he had started the airline, Jet Airways started with 20% share each from Gulf Air and Kuwait Airlines. By 1997, the government changed that rule, uh, uh, which said that, you know, foreign airlines cannot hold stake in Jet Airways. So he bought back the stake. What really happened then was that there was talk that, you know, Singapore Airlines was planning to come into India from whatever I could uh, I could figure out from all these people I spoke to. His clout within the system, you know, like I mentioned in the story, you know, Pramod Mahajan's children were working for Jet Airways. His house in London was, you know, I mean, people used to frequent that uh, bureaucrats and politicians. Uh, so that really helped him tweak that rule uh, in terms of foreign airline investments in India. Then you go on to even 2011, uh, 2013, when Etihad uh, had to invest money in Jet Airways. Uh, India changed its rule uh, in terms of foreign direct investments in, in, in aviation sector, which was done more so only to help Etihad, uh, you know, pick up a 24% stake in Jet for about 2,000 odd crores. And there is obviously the talk about how he had tremendous cloud within the system, uh, which helped him and, and the airline. Where did they start taking a decision that he was no longer required and he ran out of luck or all the political cloud? Well, that really happened in the last few months, you know, when the lenders, when Jet really couldn't pay back on the loan that they had taken, which actually went up to about $1.2, $1.3 billion that the airline owed to uh, the lenders. And the lenders eventually took control of the, aircraft, of the airline because, you know, according to the RBA laws, the lenders can then, you know, go ahead as part of the restructuring and acquire stake in the aircraft and then, you know, go on to sell the stake. Uh, sorry, the debt was about $1.1 billion. That's, that's about a ballpark figure. They really didn't have cash at hand, which is what eventually led to the lenders coming in and saying that, you know, enough is enough. You've got to uh, get out of the aircraft airline business now. Uh, we are going to find a way out and uh, we will find suitable uh, buyers for the aircraft. You know, over their experience with, with Jet Airways, I think they were not really keen to have him on board because even when the time when Etihad was with Jet, I mean, you know, with the partner there, Goyal spent a lot of his time, you know, trying to wrest back the control from, from Etihad. Um, Etihad, I think, had grand pictures for, for the company, but uh, Goyal just wanted to stay in control. Um, also, you know, what I, I uh, understood so far. Because when you're putting in so much money again, you don't want Naresh Goyal, uh, you know, pulling the strings uh, on the sidelines. So I think that's why I think they were quite clear that, you know, they wanted him out uh, when, when they had submitted their bid. And he had also submitted his bid uh, alongside, you know, to, respect, to win back the airline. But, you know, nobody was quite keen on that. Of course, he finally had to withdraw from that, uh, from that race. So what happens next to these 16,000 odd employees or maybe more if you add the contracted ones as well? The lenders will soon have to find a suitable buyer. The lenders picked up about 51% stake, but they're not willing to pump in the money the you know, the money that was needed to keep the airline running, which is about 1,500 crore. Uh, had they pumped that in, perhaps the airline would have been uh, flying at the moment uh, and then would have given them enough time to fi find a suitable buyer. But that hasn't happened and the airline has shut down business. So I have not understood what the lenders are really uh, trying to do here, what, what's on their mind. But I think the ball is in the lender's court. And like, you know, what is happening with Air India, there might be people who are willing to take on say, you know, the international routes of Jet Airways or the, the international operations of Jet Airways, you know, for instance, Tata's uh, or even SpiceJet and others. Perhaps, you know, that is the only way to go ahead uh, right now. This has a big impact on the industry itself. It has thrown all the schedules out of whack. You've got existing players who will now have to cater to that mass, which was previously being, uh, you know, serviced by Jet. What does it mean to the customers and how, how does the industry cope? So I think as of now, uh, from what I've understood is that some of the slots and routes that Jet Airways were uh, flying before, uh, those have been given to other airlines uh, so that, you know, they can increase their, uh, uh, you know, operations along those routes and keep the fares under check. But in the long run, I mean, we have got uh, a lot of airlines in India have uh, placed orders for new aircrafts. Uh, but that's, again, you know, a long time away. But until then, um, you know, I mean, you know, everybody will have to sort of rationalize their operations for, to ensure that, you know, the fares don't uh, skyrocket and the airline and the aviation ministry will have to keep a check on that. Right. Uh, it's a great story, uh, Manu. Uh, of, uh, Thank a brilliant read in terms of the reporting that has gone into it. Thanks a lot for the time on, on this podcast as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abhishek.